been looking at local government funding in the country. Well, this time around, like I mentioned, we are going to be looking at the challenges mainly now uh, that the local government uh, is facing and uh, still with the Mayor Katabi Town Council here with me. Well, uh, let's get into some of these challenges. I know you've, you've, uh, you've broken down some of those. Uh, but let's also go deeper in understanding challenges that you're facing as the local council. Thank you. Mm. Uh, one of the challenges, one, is the little funding. Okay. And even the, the little revenue, because the local revenue that we collect is very little. Uh, when you find some other town councils like Kasanje, they don't even have 600 million from their local raised revenue. So such kind of a town council has to stand on the central government transfers, which delay to come. Go to town councils like in Kokonjiru. They, they, they collect 90 million. Okay. 90 million is a year. Really, how can you plan for the community? And so all these have to stand on the government transfers, but which government transfers are not even given on a balanced level. Uh, look at the policies that we have uh, where we cannot uh, exercise some powers like maybe other authorities. For example, when we are grading roads, we need to switch talk our citizens mm -hmm. so that we, they give us space, we don't have mandates to pay their properties, but even, we have them, even if we get the mandate, we don't even have the money. Mm. to pay. So you find you have to grade a road, but at the same time, you have the burden to switch talk to these people, mm. maybe to remove their houses, their kiosks, their what, so that you, you can have good roads within the town council. So with those little fundings, we cannot exercise our mandates. Secondly, many people underlook this gov uh, local government, especially those they call them Debanene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are trying to do this, someone says, me, I'm so and so, I am not going to, to allow it. You get it? Because mm -hmm. he, he thinks it's much more bigger than the government, mm -hmm. or than the, central, uh, the local government. Okay. And three, many problems they are at that grassroots level. Right now, if I go back with you to my office, you'll mm -hmm. find a line of people residents. waiting for me. It is as if they think as if I'm the alpha and omega. So you're the answer now to where the government should actually exactly. come in. Exactly. Okay. Someone comes, uh, my child has to go back to school, mm -hmm. I don't have this. Uh, please talk to the school, they give me basare. Please, my land is taken and someone taking it is a big person in the government. So we have so many, but you find that a man like me, I can take some good months without fuel. Now, if I don't have some small business mm -hmm. where I can get my money, That's about how am I going? And this is what brings corruption. You know, just recently I wanted to, uh, before we actually step into the issue of corruption that you've mentioned, triggers me. Uh, the government released um, a statement earlier on this month that salaries will come in late. Mm. Uh, was that true? They do. Or you already received the salaries? No, no, no. Do they really come in? Or let, my friend, no. we, we are in a state of Kwagamaya. Okay. Uh, previously, because me, this is my second term in office, mm -hmm. the first term, the money was things were moving on well. Okay. You could get your salary, however little it is, you but get you, it you, you, you get it. You could know that my fuel is there, however little mm -hmm. it is. Okay. But now, mm -hmm. starting with this policy that they started, mm -hmm. you'll have to wait. Now you'll find that someone is building in the road. And my engineer wants to go to stop that person, okay. but he does not have fuel. Then he's going to tell you, Mayor, mm. can Pardon. you help us with your car uh -huh. so that we go and stop this person? Okay. You see a government running such a situation. Mm. Now, imagine they have found this man building in the road. They have even borrowed mayor's car or mm. town clerk's car. They don't have fuel. This man is going to tell them, who is the engineer? Come and we talk maybe 500 coughs or 1M. Now, is the engineer going to stop that? What is going to do, blah, blah, blah. He's coming mm -hmm. back now, I will check. Ah, until some good days, okay. someone has already finished. 
Uh, now, Lord Mayor, this, this triggers my, my, my next question. You've mentioned something to do with corruption. How are you people dealing with uh, fighting corruption? Because this is another big discussion that we can have. Yes. Uh, because as we look at how Uganda can end corruption, the fight against corruption in Uganda, we get to realize it is supposed to start from the grassroots. We keep on telling people it should start from the house, uh, from, from, let's say from the homestead, from family. You are the, a parent. You need to instill these, these virtues into your children. But now when it comes to the local government in some, in some of the areas, you get to realize corruption is also in there and quite a huge... And, huge and, uh, and yeah. one of the reasons I've mm. told you, one, local government has structures. For yeah. example, mm. they are else ones who are supposed to lead the village. Mm. The government pays them 10,000 per month. 10,000 Ugandan shillings? An LC1 in Uganda. Let, let, me, let, me, let me get the, the number right. An LC1 gets 10, An LC1 shillings. chairman in Uganda mm. is paid 10,000 shillings per month. Allowances or a salary? Call it whichever you want. So 10,000 Ugandan Because now when you mention of an allowance, mm. It may come in 1,000 shillings. Eh? Exactly. So now, what do they do? Because even the government is fearful to send this 10,000 to okay. this money's account. Mm. They collect it and it becomes 120. So they come maybe at the end of the year. <laughs> they even call you mayor. Call all the HR persons. <laughs> so they sign for the 120. Now, you know, the funny part about this uh, entire thing is I'm only uh, thinking of you are the LC1 chairperson and you're getting all this exactly. respect in the area and you're receiving 10,000 a month within the to take care of your family. Within the recent LC1 mm -hmm. elections, I saw on these televisions, I saw a man who was campaigning in the V8. Okay. As yeah. an LC1. Yeah, as an LC1. Where are you going to take the money from? Then I said, really? This man, does he know what, what is, is coming in? Because if, if you campaign within the V8, you are painting a very good picture that when you come in that office, you're going to, you're be... going to, 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 to do honey, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you break it down in 10,000, you get a shilling. That is roughly $2.5 of someone. Exactly. Now, when you come to me, my office, okay. and all my colleagues, the government pays us 308,000. That is net salary. Net salary. But they do remit for you, NSSF, and all that happens. Then you remain with a, a, around 360. Now I get where the corruption steps you in. You get it. Mm -hmm. Now, there is this policy of 20% mm -hmm. of the realized budget, okay. which runs the council. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. if my budget is 1.5, now the 20% of 1.5, okay. it is the one that runs the entire council. Okay where you have to get the allowance, eh? mm. the fuel, okay. the councillors' allowances, okay. the tents. But let's get to the councillors. Now, you're breaking this, this down. How much will a councillor earn if, if I see an LC1 chairperson earning 10,000? And for the councillors, they don't earn salary. They're getting only... It is only me who earns salary. So how are they paid? They're paid on this allowance, I'm telling you, the 20%. That's why you are going to go to town councils okay. and sub-counties you find some town councils, a councillor is earning 30,000 sitting allowance. To sit on the council? Yeah, because when you get the 20% and they calculate the full year, he's okay. supposed to get 30,000. Now, this is a man who campaigned mm. with almost 10 million, mm. telling Seeking people, I'll do heaven and earth. Now, he comes in the council, he gets 30. Others get 100, others 120, others 250, depending on... The, the income of that town council. And remember that 20%, okay. these employees that they send us, they are supposed to earn allowance okay. to do your work, to go and collect taxes from mm -hmm. people of Katabi okay. so that it can be taken to the government coffers. But, but now I, I need to know, how do you people manage to execute your duties? Because this money, in my mind, I'm actually thinking anyone who works for government is earning some good money. Now, at the end of the day, if you tell me this is the amount, I'm actually now trying to consider how do these people survive? Actually, me, 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 I just want, I want to tell you one thing. Okay. Leadership mm. is a passion. And those who count leadership and think they're going to get money, you'll be disappointed. Okay. Me, I started as a counselor mm. in 2011. You started the journey? 
and I became a, a speaker of the sub-county, Katabi, that very Katabi, it was okay. by then a sub-county. Do you know how much I was earning as a speaker? No. 120. A month. Every, not a month. Every year? No, every sitting, and we had three sittings in the year. In a year. So you were so, earning like 360,000. 120 times with three. Ah. Then oh. my other councillors mm. were earning 50, others were earning 30, because those who were earning 50 were the members of the executive. Okay. Those who were... <laughs> no, well, but, but, now, <laughs> as, as teachers were actually complaining for salary increment, how come you people did not come in and seek for salary increment? Uh, of course, we do raise the voices, okay. but, of course, in Luganda we say, Eyewe Zomumba, Gubazikuba. You decided to stand and be voted as a mayor, and not then you, you okay. found that. Mm -hmm. So for you, are not going to shout as a profession, because a profession can decide not to teach, uh, can even uh, decide to go to another school. For but you for you, you can't really decide to go to another town council. Uh, uh, people have to. people can easily vote Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Okay. Uh, lastly, from, from our topic of discussion here, I want to know, uh, so what, should, what do you want to be amended in terms of um, tax collection or in terms of uh, uh, the laws governing town councils? What are some of the things that government should work on? Those people who, are, who started the local government system, the, the Jabel Vidan Nisari, okay. had a clear vision mm -hmm. for the local entities. Government came on making amendments and amendments. But let me tell you, mm. before local governments were doing very well, when you come to Katabi, in 2001, we had a man called the late Sechalo Sarongo. Mm. They used to levy tax. By then, even graduated tax was still around. They could chase people and people would pay tax. When you look at the things he did during that time, mm. compared to what we are doing now, you even get surprised. Because for them, whenever they could get their revenue, mm. they plan for it <coughs> and execute duties. Mm. Today you cannot do that. Even the things we did in our town councils, we are great, I must say. Because we, we depend on rapport. Okay. How do you, how uh, your working relations with the investors in the, uh, in, the, in the area? Because those are the ones who can, I can be grading a road, Kumba, like currently I'm grading Chisembi Road. Okay. But you find there are other feeder roads which are very <laughs> ramshackle. Okay. Now, it's when I call Kojasongo. Kojasongo, we have a grader in this area. Mm -hmm. But we see the road going to your area is not good. Can you get some fuel and we do? Then we'll ask you how much. Oh. Then Koja can give you 100 or 200 or a million. Mm -hmm. Then you grade. You now you see. If you are not a good leader to convince such people, to help you, you are, you are going to be crying. Let me tell you, there are even other town councils where the mayors don't go in office. Because he goes there to do what? He, to do what? There's nothing there. He has no fuel, no tea, no newspaper, no what? And whenever he goes there, people come. Mayor, I have a sick child. Can you help me? Now you are telling a man to help you who is also having <laughs> his other issues and thinking of even the little pay. So let the mandate of the local government that was there previously come back. Because there is a way to check on corruption. It's not that when you take their money, you are reducing corruption. Because even where you take it, you are too corrupt. Mm -hmm. Up there, they are too corrupt. Because for them, whenever someone is appointed a minister, mm. the first thing is a car. Mm. That is very true. Someone is voted a mayor. Then the government thinks of a motorbike, motorcycle. Eh? Mm. Uh, Let me tell you, the way, the way you think, mm. it's what you devolve. If now the government thinks of a mayor to be on a motorcycle, and now you are bringing a project of 20 billions in his area, and you have given that project to Sonko as a service provider. Mm. And this mayor on a motorcycle is supposed to monitor Sonko, because that's what the law is saying, mm -hmm. that I should be monitoring you. That means when I come to the site, Sonko is going to look and see five million. Thank you for coming. They give you five. Are you going to monitor anything? No, you're not going because to. now, you have come on a motorbike, this man has given you five million, you even to, you, you actually tell even not to go back. So this man is going to do all the ramshackled work. Mm -hmm.
because he has no person to do what? To supervise. Yeah, to supervise. All right. Many thanks for being part of our discussion today. And I will tell you, I did enjoy this one. And this is actually calling upon me to actually seek for more <laughs> of uh, the local council leaders yes. to talk about these yeah. discussions. These are vital things that we really need to look at. Some of us actually thought uh, being a government worker, things come smoothly. Oh. And uh, surprisingly, it doesn't happen that way. Well, and you cannot simply make this stuff up. This is what you get for your morning every day, being part of our daily Kickstarter smart means business. That brings us to the end of our topic of discussion. I had Ronald Kalema, the Lord Mayor Katavi Town Council, taking us through government fundings on the local government. Thank you. All right, now we switch our eyes to Talk Matters SMB Insight. And in our SMB Insight this morning, we look at the relevance of digitization in farming. How best can farmers use technology to make advancement in the farming sector and see that the agricultural sector in Uganda grows steadily with the levels of export as well as creating huge market for our agriculture products away from Uganda. This is the SMB Insight. ensuring that we create secure systems that allow users to confidently leverage technology to advance um, their different activities and the products and services they, they come up with. Specifically for agriculture, we believe that um, technology and digitization is supposed to be a major enabler for scaling uh, growth and expansion of activities in agriculture. One by helping in accelerating uh, capacity building and uh, literacy uh, through digital rails for the farmers to better understand best practices and how to leverage um, the information age to better, uh, better yield from uh, their harvests and whatever practices they have down there. Well, any farmer would need to know about pesticides, herbicides, about buyers and sellers, about uh, the money markets, about what is trending in, in the uh, business of agriculture, about what consumers need. And they would also need to be connected to their direct consumers in many ways. One, to help them access a broader market, and two, to take away the burden of the brokers and middlemen that come in and take away a lot of what would have been the benefit of the farmer at the bottom of the pyramid. And internet helps in bridging that gap. Internet uh, helps in making sure that everyone gets information in real time and in a way that we can all trust. But the cost of internet are still a bit high for the farmers, especially those that live uh, deep down in, in, in the rural areas. Yes, 10 years ago in Uganda alone, you could have to buy a GB of data at about 60,000 shillings and now you can buy one at 4,000 or five. Of course, some of them are not really complete for, per se, but at least uh, by, by word, they say they are selling a, a GB. And I mean, that is a very good improvement, but still, even 4,000 is not affordable. We are talking about someone spending their whole kilogram of, of portion that would have been food for a whole family, buying a, a GB of data, and that is still high. So. Of course, government and the private players need to, and donor agencies and foundations need to come into partnerships to create um, an interoperable sort of um, arrangement that allows us to create a new way of creating a PPP infrastructure, having more access to technology, cutting down the costs for the uh, user at the bottom of the pyramid, and in the end helping the farmers leverage this better. I think we need to look at majorly two things. Uh, one, the quality of data, then availability in terms of uh, people being able to afford and utilize it sustainably. Uh, what really counts in this connectivity age, the ability to stay connected with the farm information as well as uh, the market information is very key.
farmers need to be able to easily interact uh, with each other as farmers for peer support, knowledge sharing. Likewise, again, there needs to be an easy, almost seamless uh, communication between the market requirements, the market status that is able to give a signal to the farmers on how they can be able to direct their produce, both in quality and quantity availability in seasons, yes. So it is quite important, but there are two things they have to work on concurrently. The quality of data, as well as the ability to avail it in terms of costs. So it's quite important to be able to leverage and improve productivity within our farming sector. The availability, all of us work with information. The more informed, the more you can optimize your resources to do better. So we believe that if farmers have uh, better information about the inputs available, the cost on inputs, they are able to, 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 to rationalize uh, the way they produce and utilize the resources available to them. Likewise, if they have uh, a market signal that is, that is instant, it helps them to bargain better when someone comes to buy their produce. So it definitely will spur productivity within the farming communities. All right, now, when you look at agriculture and the growth of our agricultural sector in Uganda, definitely, speaking of uh, not only value addition, but also speaking of using technology, countries like Japan, looking at the countries like the Netherlands or Holland, and uh, the other countries like Germany, who have uh, definitely benefited from technology, and also China, uh, who have definitely benefited from technology in agriculture, can definitely be a big example uh, to our farmers here in Uganda. Now, looking at technology in farming, you can think of uh, using tractors, using heavy equipment that will help you boost production and also uh, add value uh, to your farm as well. And that is the best way to go because now things are turning uh, into, a into a digital driven economy. But then, how do you do this? Uh, when you look at how technology is actually moving on and steadily changing, evolving in one way or the other, you get to realize that it is important to safely use it because sometimes it may have an impact onto the climate and also to the environment and in the long run also damage the crops that you are definitely uh, dealing in or harvesting or anyway the crops that you are planting but with that particular one we head into a break we return with the SMB on ground with Barije Andrew stick around good morning <laughs>